Welcome to the Faithful Fathering Podcast. This is Rick Wirtz, founder and president of Faithful Fathering, where we work to encourage and equip dads to be faithful fathers. Dads that prioritize physical presence, are engaged emotionally, and lead spiritually by example. This podcast series is all about Father's Day month. You know, last month I encouraged all to to keep honoring moms the full month long, to take them out on date and uh, treat them special, not just on Mother's Day, but across the whole month. So this month I'm charging dads to embrace to the full the honor and the privilege it is to be a dad, to be a spiritual father, and uh, live into that as uh, we begin to understand and embrace how Uh, wonderful it is that our Heavenly Father shared the moniker Father with us, that we would be His representative in family. What an awesome responsibility that is. So so what would Father's Day month look like? And uh, I I would like to charge every dad when you when you meet someone as you do every day saying, how's it going? How's it going? You know, say happy Father's Day month, brother. And see what happens. I, I, I think you'll get a different response than maybe you normally get. It may open the door for a conversation about summer plans or maybe how grown kids are doing. But it just it, the idea is to raise the awareness and, and the visibility of fathers across this month. It is a special month indeed. And uh, we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot of responsibility to step into as well if we're going to represent the Father well. The passage that comes to mind for this series is uh, from John 14. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. You know, Jesus provides the relational model that dads are to emulate in the home. The charge is to lead in a way that points to Jesus and live in a way that opens the hearts of kids to him and to the Father. So that's our charge, is to begin to understand how we live in to this relational model. So that's kind of the overtone for this uh, podcast series. And in the in the house with me today is Mr. Robert Valle. Robert, good to have you here. He is a man, a husband, and a father. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I check off all the boxes, Rick. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, so I'm a dad, uh, a husband, father. I guess dad and father are the same thing. I've been married 17 years. Uh and it's been amazing. And, you know, I, I tell young guys all the time, look, don't think marriage is going to solve all your problems. You know, it comes with, with highs and lows and you just got to tough through it all out. And uh, sure enough, there's there's been highs and lows. But at the end of the day, 17 years and, and looking forward to many, many more. Um, three children, got a teenage son and two daughters uh, between the ages of seven and nine. So we're uh, we're busy. We're busy running around and doing everything we need to do. Well, busy pretty well defines a lot of dads these days. And sure does. That I know a lot of dads come to me and say, you know, how do you? How are we supposed to balance all this stuff in a way that honors God? What do you? How do you balance all your uh, responsibilities? You know, that's a great question, Rick. And I wish I could say I've got it all figured out, but we're figuring it out as we go. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I do, I do tr- I try to prioritize, um, my time with the Lord, my time with family, um, along with serving at church and, uh, obviously work cause we have to provide, but, um, it's, uh, it's a juggling game. You know, that's, that's the best way I can put it. It's, it's, you know, juggling balls in the air and, and making sure that none of them fall to the ground. And, mm. um, I check in sometimes with my son and, mm. you know, he, he's at the point where he can have more adult type conversations. And, and I'll ask him like, son, how am I doing as a dad? And uh, he he feels kind of weird when I ask him that. He goes, dad, don't ask me that. I, I, I feel weird a- a- answering that question. So um, timing I, is everything with a teenage son. You oh, ask, him, ask him before he gets his meal, then you'll get. You know, there you go. Say, you give me the right <laughs> answer. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's it's a, definitely uh, it can be a challenge, but I've. Uh, I'm surrounded with 
godly men that have shown the example mm. of of what it looks like to to balance it all and, and balance it well and keeping things prioritized the way they need to be to honor God. Yeah, and priority is a key word, isn't it? I think the uh, devil uh, gets us thinking that we can balance all this stuff. And right. at the end of the day, it isn't about balance. It is about those priorities. Right. And, uh, right. you know, we prioritize our relationship with Christ. We And as you know, you know, you're 17 years in, I'm 44 years in, I'm learning how to love as Christ loves, to Amen. live my relationship with Christ in the marriage. And so I love her more today than the day we married because of that responsibility. That's a number two priority. Number one, relationship with Christ, two is relationship with our bride. Right. And then how we reflect that in the home. And Absolutely. I found if I can focus on those three, then everything else will pretty well fall in line behind that. It's it's like the secret to marriage. You know, one time once we realize we're supposed to die for our wives, <laughs> everything else pretty well falls yeah, right. yeah. into place. So <laughs> that, that's, if we understand that selfless service uh, and sacrificial living, then uh, everything else will fall in. But it, it is so important. I, you mentioned you have a teenage son, and uh, you know there's some uh, pretty critical eyes watching you, aren't there? Oh yeah, it definitely keeps me on my toes. Um, you know, sometimes there's things that we get convicted about that we know maybe we should be doing less of. Um, and when you've got an audience that's not just an audience, they're sponges. Mm -hmm. They're soaking it in. And, and that's even a bigger responsibility because now I'm thinking, OK, it's not just me. What am I teaching them? And when they do it, let's just say they do emulate something that I've done. Who do I blame but myself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yes, they're uh, they're definitely watching. They're, they're watching my every move, and uh, that allows me to be a little more thoughtful in in the way I move, in, mm -hmm. in what we do, and in, in how we do it, because uh, that's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, and as you look at uh, your kids maturing, you got a thirteen year old, and you got some younger kids. Uh, what's the difference on you know when you when you share priorities or when you share uh, activities and what they can do? Uh, how how do you weigh those in with with who you are as a couple, uh, as far as what they can have access to, what they can what they prioritize? You know, whether what are their priorities at the end of every school day or going into summer? Absolutely. The uh, so the I love being a father of a teenager, um, it almost allows me to, we can't change things that we did as a child, right? Or as a teenager, but it allows me to use those things that I did that I should have done differently and to be transparent with my son at an age appropriate, in an age appropriate way to show him like, to show him that dad made mistakes but I'm telling you these things, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. I always tell him, I want you to be a better, bigger, stronger man of God than your dad is. Um, and that is encouraging because all he, as you've taught, you know, as w when they're little, they look, look up to us and we're, we're everything. Mm -hmm. But I've been instilling in him that he can do even more than what he's He's seen me do. So that's with, with my, with my teenage son, with, uh, with my little girls, it, it's different because, um, number one, they're girls, right? So that's the difference. It's, di it's different. <laughs> and I've never been in those shoes, but I know how guys can be with girls. So I can give them that perspective. I had to tell my, uh, my older girl, Look, baby, you will eventually have a husband, but I want to help you. My job is because we've told them from the very the very beginning, our job is to protect you. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, look, my job is to protect you and to make sure that that man that ends up being your husband is the right man for you, that is going to love you, is going to treat you right, is going to respect you. And guess now what that does? Dad's got to be sure he's doing that. Because if not, dad's a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, not only is age uh, a difference, but obviously gender is a difference in, in the way we approach it. But uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. 
Well, that, uh, you know, studies have shown over the years that uh, young ladies will marry someone that uh, resembles their dad. Right. Even physically, which between you and me is a little bit scary when you think wow. about it. I want, I want better looking grandkids. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, so uh, let's go back to your teenage son now. Uh, you're, you talked about your priorities. Now, you you know, I, I always say you know, with your younger girls, you're in what we call the teacher season. Right. So you're... Your your standard, your word, all that is is really uh, a profound word that is just the way it is in their lives. As you get into these teen years, it it becomes a uh, you know I'll say in the teacher season we're grounding kids in these values and the faith we want to instill and preparing them for those outside influences. Well, now with your teenage son, you're starting to see some of those outside influences. So it's about empowering him with those right priorities, with his faith, to make wise choices amid other influences. So I know culture right now says the priority is t screen time, right? Right. So uh, how do you help uh, your son understand that, uh, you know, this priority may, may or may not be healthy for you? So um, that's a loaded question, Rick, because, you know, I'm a, uh, I, I'm a, my screen time is pretty high, Rick, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm being fully transparent. Just you know, work. You got emails. You got. It, it's hard to stay to stay off of the off of devices. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to number one is is live it. Um, dinner table. Right. You know when right. when we're at the dinner table. Hey, put, let's put our phones away. That includes dad. That includes mom. That includes everybody. Mm -hmm. You know whether whether it's out of sight, out of mind, out of yeah. sound, out of. Yeah, earshot, and and we'll get a little rebuttal from from the teenager, like, well, you know, I'm just well, you can watch it later, but again, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm telling everybody else, hey, you put your phones up, but I'm on my phone, that's just not going to fly. <laughs> well, that uh, uh, I know the kids. I, I don't know what the average hours number of hours now is, but I, th I think that it is important to set up those boundaries, isn't it? To, yes. To make sure not only know what they're watching, but how much time they're spending on it. And of course, we always emphasize that open door policy that there's no phones behind closed doors, right. there's no computer, no 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 technology behind closed Absolutely. doors. And uh, so that's something that we always try to say. You know, what are some flags that you know that some priorities might be getting mixed up? How how do you really, uh, uh, as a couple, do you how do you stay on top of your game? Because there's so much coming at our kids, and and these days there is uh, enough uh, alone time that uh, you know they they have to make their own decisions. We can't watch them 24 seven, so particularly in the early teen years. You have to kind of work. You know, there's your word balance. You have to right. you have to balance between you know what's going to be a, a strict rule and what's going to be a boundary and what's going to be uh, letting the reins out a little bit. Have you? How do you guys address yeah. that? As so, couple? so one thing that that we do, um, we did give access to a, to a phone earlier than than your recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but we've we've always had it monitored. Um, we get alerts, regular alerts, and sometimes they're just innocent. Most of the time they're innocent alerts, so it's very sensitive. Um, there are a lot of, on the technology side, there's, there's applications now. Are they foolproof? Nothing is foolproof. Mm -hmm. But it gives us a good idea of what is going on, what the friends are talking about, which friends are good influences, which ones are not good influences. Um, and we have a discussion about it, you know, Hey, here's a screenshot of, of what the application sent me. What, what do you think? Let's talk about it. Let's mm -hmm. okay. Um, one thing that, that my son is, is a great kid for the most part, obviously, you know, with, with teen years, you have, uh, situations where they may test boundaries and try to see how much they can, they can push. And, um, but for the mo most part, he's, he's a great kid. And that's why we decided to, um, to allow him to do certain things. He had earned the trust. Right. He earned the trust. And um, we have very open lines of communication. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best things that my son told me the other day was, Dad, you're pretty good at giving advice. Mm. And, um, you know, whether it be a situation at school, a situation with friends, and it's usually around bedtime. Mm. So we know... Any day around bedtime, 
it, it's going to be the time to talk. Mm -hmm. And and I I welcome it with arms wide open. Sure, sure. Because he's he's pouring his heart out, mm -hmm. sharing whatever he's thinking about, and um, it really gives us the opportunity to you know either I'll lay with him or my wife will lay with him, and and we just pour into him and uh, remind him of of who he is in God's eyes. And uh, it, it's just that that almost like the window time, the the the, the windshield time that, that you talk about, but it, it's just a, a different way of, of doing that. And it's a really good way of conversation. And after one of those, after he was taking notes mm. um, about the things I was telling him, and uh, he's like, "Man, Dad, you're you're pretty good at giving advice," and it just uh, it just <laughs> warmed me up. Well, the other thing I hear there is if you want to prioritize time with your son, you do it right before you feed him or right before he doesn't want to go to sleep. That's so right. He, he wants to eat and he doesn't want to go to there sleep. There you go. So there you got it. Timing is everything. <laughs> now, tell me, uh, is, you know, I have found over the years, uh, Father's Day has always kind of made me sit up a little bit straighter, think a little bit clearer, and, uh, and, ex and, and really – uh, work to live into this role as a father. And when you look at this Father's Day month or maybe past Father's Day months, how have, have the, how has it been a catalyst for you on your, on your fathering journey or has it been? You know, um, it just happened by coincidence to be this month, but my wife sent me a, uh, a video a couple of days ago and, uh, it had to do with fathering and, I scrolled on to the next video and, and kind of kept watching some fathering videos and it um, just brought me to tears because we do the best we can with what we know, right? Um, I love my dad. My dad admits that he made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, no hard feelings. And as anyone who tries to do better, I don't want to repeat those mistakes. And I realize that I make my own mistakes and it just, um, I want to make sure that my kids know that, that dad is really, really wanting to, to be the best dad he can be for them. Mm -hmm. And I know as, as teenagers, as little kids, sometimes it's not, it may be dad's being too strict or dad is uh, always complaining or, you know, I also have to be careful to make sure that I'm not conveying the message of, hey, you're not good enough. No, it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's that I, I love you so much that I want to, I want the best for you. Mm -hmm. And I question myself, mm -hmm. am I doing a good job of being a dad? And that's what brought me to tears because I'm doing everything I can to provide. I'm doing everything I can to protect. Uh, I'm doing everything I can to teach. Uh, I'm doing everything I can to keep the home together along with my wife. And I realized that I can do all I can, but at the end of the day, God is in control. And I have to remind myself sometimes that, okay, and I do, I, I believe that I do a pretty good job of, of realizing because I don't think about those things a whole lot, Rick, but those videos really got me thinking like, am I, am I doing it? Am, am I doing it right? Am I, am I, mm -hmm. I know I want to do the best, but am, and to answer your question, it just, for me, it's, it's not a month of June thing or a Father's Day thing. It just happened to happen a couple of days ago in June that my wife sent me that video and it really got me thinking. So I guess this is a good time to challenge the dads, right? Mm -hmm. What What are you doing? Um, what can you do better? Because that's what I want to know. Sure. What What Where can I improve? Right. Yeah, you can tell me the things I'm doing good, praise God, but what am I doing wrong? Mm. What What can I do better? What don't I know? Earlier, I said you you only you can only do you know you, you only uh, know what you. I forgot what I said, but basically, <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. But if someone can tell me, if Rick can tell me, hey, Robert, you know, should probably maybe do this a little bit differently. Man, thank you, Rick. I didn't even think of that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's challenge the men to, if you're watching out there, analyze, 
self-reflect. You're probably doing a great job, but we can always do better. Absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, we were given this power. You know, you're right. Uh, dads tend to take too much credit sometimes when the kids make good decisions and they take too much blame when they make bad decisions. But uh, the bottom line is to always give it your best. And and the Lord is plenty big enough to fill in those gaps yeah. <clears throat> that, uh, that may exist as a result of that. But I applaud uh, dads. You heard the message and the, the, we talked about prioritize. And uh, the main priority is your personal passionate relationship with Jesus the Christ. Secondly is learning how to live that relationship and marriage to love your bride as Christ loves the church and then reflect it in family and if if those priorities are conveyed day in day out then uh, your kids are going to catch what you have and that's the that's the priority is that you have what you want your kids to catch and uh, thank you Robert for the time and uh, dads listen to those tips uh, I think uh, Father's Day month is a beautiful time to kind of reflect in uh, you're on this podcast so that's a blessing also visit our website faithfulfathering.org except the Father's Day uh, is the Faithful Fathering Challenge that uh, is available on the Connect page of our website there's also a Dads Becoming Heroes Challenge a study you could complete uh, across the month and uh, of course there's the Dad talk that uh, our, our blogs across this month are all about encouraging and equipping you as the dad you're called to be, the dad your kids need to see. God bless. Godspeed.